All right, good day everyone. My name is Adebayo Adisax, aka Jagabano Sazophony. So today, welcome to my channel. And uh, like I promised, we're going to be having a series of class on how to improvise on the saxophone. And this class is going to take us a while in order for us to understand the concept of uh, improvisation, like how to solo into a song uh, when you hear or you listen to a song. I mean, the way you approach to the song. So after this class, is gonna, this class is gonna help you to have this uh, change of reasoning to how to approach or improvise into a song. And today, uh, we're going to be starting with a phrase which I started with earlier. And um, we're going to get used to the phrase. Then we now use it in one of our African song. I believe those that are not Africans, we have the same language when it comes to music all over the world. So when a China man listening to an African song, he understand the concept because he understand the rhythms, the chord changes, the movements. So he won't have problem understanding the song. So we have our songs that we do here and I believe most of our African friends too uh, understand uh, most of our African car music because we have the same thing in common. So we are going to be using this song. Um, what shall I say unto the Lord? If you watch most of my videos, I use it especially starting most of my song because it gives me this vibe of continuity to any song I want to pick. You know, uh, you know. So although we have variety of song, but that's one of the song I always want to connect with whenever I'm on, on stage. So. I have like almost plenty, but I'm, I'm going to say I highlighted like seven, seven phrases that we can juggle in, in this song. And that can help us relate that same phrase into another song. And one thing I want you to understand is every song or any phrase of any, I mean, any phrase or probably, let me see, any skill you play in any key, it means another thing in another key like it can be relative it can be related to another key while you are playing that same phrases i'm going to be dissecting that in another class because at the course of doing some of my research i discovered that that same phrase that i use when i'm playing the key of c i can still use that same phrases in my key of F, that is on the uh, auto sax now, and it gives another meaning. But in my mind, I'm playing that same thing that I know how to play on my key of C. <laughs> so it's, it's something that we have to understand this concept. We have to understand how it operates. And that's why we have the relative uh, keys, relative minor, relative that, relative D. So we're not going to be talking about that today. but. The song that I talk about is this song. I'm sure most of us know the song, but I'm going to play the song. And like I said, uh, my previous is always check my description section because I will drop those information that you need. The phrases, the turning suffers, and uh, the key that I use in order to give you a better understanding and, you know, enhance your movement. You know, so... I'm going to be dropping it there and I want you to go through them as well uh, to help your to help your to aid your learning anyway so uh, to avoid some back and forth to rewind and all that forward and all that so now the song is uh what shall I say until the Lord so we're going to be using key of uh, E flat on the on the concert instruments and um, C on the saxophone so Okay, no, that, that's not the key. Okay. 
So that is the song you're going to be using. You can decide to play it on your uh, uh, mid range octave. <laughs> So depending on how or how you want to start the song, you have to um, you have to be attentive to uh, the people you are dealing with and how you felt the atmosphere want to take you, you know. <clears throat> so uh, the the phrase we are going to be using is this uh, the one I played earlier. So. The one I played, the, the phrase I played earlier, uh, let me play it again. And I can play it on the upper side of it, like the, uh, the octave or the, the higher uh, octave. You know, but you have to be very mindful of resolving your, your phrase so as not to restrict you from moving further. Okay, so now resolving it is very very important. So you have to know which key, uh, which which point at which point are you resolving it? Don't resolve it in a point that is gonna restrict you from playing it. I mean, for, for playing for that, probably won't you won't allow you to get to the point at which you can continue uh, your song. You know. So you can take it from high, like the high octave, like the high range, or probably the low range, but you know, it depends, like I said earlier. You know, so don't be restricted. Just make sure that your brain is working, you know. phrase that really just now I'm going to be using it in our last class I'm going to expand it because um, it's just uh, the first line that I played so I'm going to be expanding it uh, uh, for us to be able to use it so but let me let me rephrase that uh, the, the 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 phrases we are stressing on today which is um, no do me re do ti la so mi fa la mi re so mi so so mi fa so me do, you know, do do me re do till I saw me fa. La me re so me fa so me do, you know. So just get used to it and try as much as possible. Make sure that you apply it. If you feel like you can always um uh, drop what you rehearse and tag me and I would like to get your feedback 
and God bless you. I remain your boy, Jagabano Sazophonist at D Sax. Love you. So love you and see you in next class. Make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell for more videos. Thank you.